In this example, we're asked to complete several things regarding a set of data given here. Um, and I can see that the first couple of things we're asked to do is to draw a scatter diagram um, and to find an equation of a line containing two specific points. So let's go ahead and open up this data in StatCrunch. All right, and if we just want to look at the um, scatter plot, let's go down to that option underneath graph. We'll select X and Y and compute. And we see here a scatter plot, but if I go back to my choices, it may not exactly match anything that I have here. Sorry, it's coming off the screen, but I see that the reason why is because my diagram has a different, um, not scale, but a, values along the x and y axis that are being included in the graph. Mainly here I see that they're both starting at zero. So what I want to do is I want to come back um, to the graph that I'm given and you notice these three lines down here at the bottom. It's kind of like a menu for your graph and we can select the x axis. We can go ahead and set the minimum here at zero and click OK. And we could do the same thing for the y-axis, set its minimum at zero, and then click OK. Um, now, I did not set the maximum value to be the same, but that might be enough to make a better match. But I do still see one that is kind of tricky here. Um, notice that that one's going from um, the x-axis is not on um, the horizontal axis. See here where it says y and the y-axis instead says x. So if I go back and look at my answer choices, that's why the best choice is choice A. If I want it to make look exactly like the one I see here, I'll go and set the x-axis maximum to 90 and the y-axis maximum to 100 and that should look much more like the answer choice I see here in part A. The next part of this problem asks us to find an equation of a line containing two specific points. So because it's just the two points and it's not all of the data, this is something I'm going to do by hand. One more thing I want to note here is that under that equation it's telling us to either type integers or simplified fractions. So we're going to be as precise as possible, not changing our fractions to decimals. So I've started this process um, here where we're finding the line containing these two points. Um, notice I start by finding the slope between those two points. That's the difference of y's divided by the difference of x's. Um, and I get this fraction where normally, yes, I may just type that into a calculator and change that to um, a decimal, but instead I want to just leave this as a fraction. So let's just simplify that fraction. I see that both of these contain the same factor of 5. So if I divide each the numerator and the denominator by 5, I get negative 5 sixth. So I'm going to keep that particular value. Now if I were to divide those, I get approximately 0.833. And I can see that at first this student was putting um, that decimal value, but this is something that you just want to pay attention to maybe even before you start on the process um, with problems like this. Okay, the next part of this problem is we need to now put this information into an equation of a line and I'm going to use the point slope form. So I have here the point slope form for an equation of a line. I've substituted in the slope that I just calculated and I'm choosing this point to substitute um, as the point for x sub 1, y sub 1. So let's now distribute the 5 sixth. Sorry, that was negative 5 sixth. All right, so when I distribute that, I, notice I'm keeping these values as fractions. I am simplifying that as I go, and I can let my calculator help me with that. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is add the 43 to both sides. And now I have an equation of a line in y equals mx plus b form, which I needed for my math lab. And I also have exact values, either integers or fractions. So let's go back to my math lab and input that information. Okay, so again, not that what was there was completely incorrect. It was just an approximation using these um, 
fractions instead of, as decimals. So just pay close attention to that kind of stuff here. Next, we're asked to graph that line that we found here on part B on top of the scatter diagram. And I'm going to use basically a process of elimination here. Um, I have the correct scatter diagram here. Notice that scatter plot had x from 0 to 90, y from 0 to 100, and I see this general you know, picture of what that data looks like. Um, so that tells me I can go ahead and eliminate b as a choice. I also know I can eliminate c as a choice. Um, that doesn't make any sense. We have a slope that's negative. Um, so I'm kind of here between a and d, but if I go back and look at those scales, d is the better choice. Um, one other thing that D will do is I see that it goes through the two points. This line goes through the two points that we fit the line to. So I can pop out this window, you know, to inspect that further. Um, and I encourage you to do that if you're stuck between a couple of choices there. But use your process of elimination as well. Next, um, it says here by hand, determine the least squares regression line, but I want to show you in StatCrunch only because any time that we can use technology to speed up our processes, we're going to do so. So I open up the data in StatCrunch. I go to regress, stat regression, simple linear. We'll select X and Y and compute. This um, Simple linear regression is going to be noted here in our output that we receive um, from StatCrunch. Just note that the order of those two terms is different than the order that we're going to write it here inside of my math lab. They give us the y-intercept first, and then they give us the term that's the slope times the independent variable. Okay, so pay attention to that. Also, it says to round to three decimal places as needed, but we have some exact values here, so I don't need to worry about that. For the next part, it's asking us to graph this regression line on the scatter diagram. Um, again, think about your process of elimination. I know immediately I can eliminate choice B because that is not the scatter plot that we originally had, and I can eliminate choice D because I have a negative slope. This one has a zero slope, this particular line. Um, but if I want to see in more detail what that looks like together, I would come back to the output screen that I had from StatCrunch, click this right arrow, and now you have the line. Um, if you want to change the scale, remember you can do so over here. Um, you could even kind of shrink it like this, you know, to get a better sense of what that looks like together. Um, but then pick the best answer choices between A and C. And A is the better answer choice. Um, next, we're asked to compute the sum of the squared residuals that we found for the line in part B. And this is the line that we found by hand. Um, this one here. Okay, so in part B. Um, so I can use StatCrunch to kind of help out with this process. I could do it by hand. Um, I do want to link another video from Khan Academy that does a good job of just explaining the concept of residuals. So I encourage you to watch that as well. Um, but one way or the other, we've got to go through and find the residuals, square them, and then sum them for this particular line. And I'm choosing to do stack crunch just to help me organize this process. Um, I'm here in the third column. I'm going to go to data, compute, expression. And the first thing I want to do is calculate what the line predicts each data point should be. Um, so to do this, let's build an expression that is this equation here. Um, so we'll do, let's see here, negative. 5, 6 times x, I just double click that x to add it, um, plus 329 divided by 3. Um, and we will compute. And you can see here this new information has been included. This is what the line says um, the data should be, it's what it's predicted to be, but this is what actually happened. You'll notice that two points are exactly the same, 
8043 is what actually happened and 8043 is what is what was predicted for example um, but that's because we created this line to go through that point you see that also happens here the next thing we want to do is find these differences of what actually happened minus what was predicted to happen so let's go through this process again from column four we're going to go to data compute expression and we'll build this one to be what actually happened so i'm double clicking y minus what was predicted to happen so i double click this expression here um, let's click ok i'm going to put an, a label here i'm going to call this residual so i'll remember what i am computing um, and now that new column has been added and then in column five um, we're going to select inside column five go to data compute expression because the last thing we want to do is square these residuals at least here inside of our um, spreadsheet so i'm going to double click residuals and let's square that click ok and compute and now we have our values of residuals squared so when we're asked for the sum of the squared residuals, we just need to sum this column. So adding up these values, I get the following um, answer rounded to three decimal places. Now in part G, I'm asked to compute the sum of the squared residuals for the least squared regression line. And that is something that you get as, an, as part of the output inside of StatCrunch when you find the simple linear regression. So I'm just going to start from scratch, open my data in StatCrunch. I'll go to Stat, Regression, Simple Linear. And at first, this looks a lot like you're finding the least squared regression line. It may look like you're finding the coefficient of determination or you're getting a graph. Um, but one of the many things that's included here is the sum of the squared residuals. Inside this output, those residuals are referred to as error. And the sum of the squares is right here, SS. So together, if we look inside that column and row, we get that the sum of the squared residuals, or error, is 40.8. This last part is just a statement of comparison between the two lines, the one that you found that you fit by hand through two points in Part B versus the one that you found in Part D where you ran the simple linear regression inside of StatCrunch. So the line that we found in Part B actually passes through more points. It passes through two points. Um, I'm not even sure that the line that we found in Part D passed through any of the points, and that's not unusual for a simple linear regression or a least squared regression line. Um, but the line that we found in Part D will always minimize the sum of the squared residuals, thus being the best fitting line. Just like the name suggests, it is the least squared regression line. Um, so it has minimized the sum of the squared residuals.